Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's performance of Oliver. We hope you really enjoy it. Oliver, for our school, has been a long time coming. I think Sam and I first discussed doing Oliver about two decades ago. So it's been thought about and thought about and thought about. It just never felt quite like the right group, but this time last year, probably probably exactly this time as is the Friday, not a Thursday, um, I, we, I woke up and I thought maybe this group might be the right group for Oliver. So September holidays last year, I read Oliver again. It was about two decades since I'd read it. And I thought, I think we can do it. I think it'll be really good. So we really hope you enjoy it. Uh, as it goes along, you'll see what an amazing amount of work's gone, in, gone into it. The group of children we worked with, from the smallest to the biggest, have been very easy to work with and really committed. Learnt their lines early and just, when you're running rehearsal and people aren't getting up and fidgeting and poking other people, it actually makes it easier. <laughs> and on that count, they've been especially good. Um, eight years ago, no, nine years ago, I met my wife, then to be wife, in Kunming, China. And I said to her, oh, I hadn't watched the video, the DVD of the play yet. Let's watch it. And there's a little child's been immortalised the whole way through, through crying the whole way through the play. <laughs> and there are also a couple of mobile phones rang during that performance. I'm currently being filmed. The children are going to be filmed. So if you prefer, was it wasn't your child or your mobile phone that's going to be recorded for forever, and I can hear my child already. <laughs> Um, then maybe, I don't know, what do we say? Turn off your children and your mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the show. Thank you. 
some more. More! Catch him! Snatch him! Hold him! Scold him! Pouch him, trounce him, pick him up and bounce him! Wait! Before we put the lad to task, may I be so curious as to ask his name? Oliver! 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 Never before has a boy wanted more. Yes, if it's more you want, more you shall get. More cockroaches to eat, more beating swarming, and more trouble than you've ever bargained for. Yes, boys, there'll be certainly more in store for you. <laughs> right. This should teach you young urchins to step out of line. <laughs> Why? I've never seen the likes of it. Too well looked after. That's the trouble. A side roof above your head and a good meal every day. Mrs. Ma'am, what shall we do with this ingrate? Throw him out, good riddance. Please, ma'am, no please. Too late, lad. Off you go. <laughs> And so it was on his 12th birthday, Oliver found himself on the streets, homeless. Now Oliver was anxious to have his locket, the only memento from his family he had left. So that very night he sneaked back to the workhouse.
Oliver, do you know what peaching is? Telling? Squealing! You must never tell anyone about this place and who's here. Got it? <coughs> Don't worry, Dodger. I won't lie. I didn't say no lying. I said no peaching. Oliver now finds himself in Fagin's lair, where he is warmly welcomed.
Ah, viele Fee! Oliver, just because you know your manners and 
and they don't. What do you mean? I know me manners. I'm a regular dead too. I am. Allow me to spot you across the road, my lady. <laughs> Another 
the subject they taught while you were conveniently absent from school. Why you can't even tell if you're being cheated. I know well enough this farmant is stealing from me every chance he gets. Where's my money, Fagin? There, there, my dears. No cause for concern. I never cheat of what's rightfully yours, Bill. Sit down and have a cup of tea. Fagin always says things go better with a cup of tea. <laughs> But not El Grey. Uh -huh. I'm not sitting down and I'm not having a cup of tea. And who's Faith? Tribulations 
better settle down and get myself a wife. And a wife would cook and sew for me and come for me and go for me and go for me and nag at me. The fingers she would wag at me, the money she would take from me, a misery she'd make for me. I think I'd better think it out again. <laughs>
<laughs> you look ravishing. <laughs> Care. Hmm. 
Mother, do you have parents and a home? No, ma'am. Then why don't you come and stay with us? In Governor Square? You'll like it there. Governor Square? Why, that's where my Yes, mother... yes. Well, that's quite enough excitement for one day, I think. Home we go. on it. It may very well. Oh girl, it may very well. We all need to fight Oliver. No Bill, leave him alone. <laughs>
the plans being made for him, Oliver is happily enjoying his life at Mr Brownlow's house. He seems to recognise the picture on the wall. <laughs> that woman, Mr Brownlow, she's Yes, very... Oliver. That is a picture of my dear departed wife. God rest her soul. She left me so young, so long ago. And then Agnes, dear Agnes, gone, so young too, because of my... Uh, it's Dr Grimley. Come in, Doctor. I think you'll find a great improvement in the boy. That's for me to say, sir. Come here, boy. so 
good. New clothes and everything. Hello, Miss Nancy. Where are you going with those books? <clears throat> to school? No, I'm returning them to the bookstore in High Street. Come with me then. I'll show you a shortcut. I have to be straight back at Mr Brownlow's. Come with me then. I don't want to be late. Well, I wouldn't be too worried about that, you little imp. Help! Ah! You'll shut up if you know what's good for you. Careful, Bill, you don't want to hurt him. Don't I? <gasps> Oh, 
Well, if there is, I'd like to hear it. I feel like the sentimental old fool that Grimwick thinks I am. <laughs> May I help you? <laughs> I'm here to see Miss Maylie, please, ma'am. Do you have an appointment? No, but I'm certain she'll see me. If you tell her it's about Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> There's a common street girl to see you, Miss Maylie. She, she says it's a matter of some concern. She wouldn't give a name. And why didn't you have this street girl thrown out? No, Uncle. I will see her. Perhaps I may be of some consolation to her, if she is in need. Unlikely. But, as you wish. <laughs> it's very hard to get to see you, lady. And if I had been offended and left, or been sent away, you'd have been sorry, I think, one day. I'm very sorry if anyone has behaved harshly to you. Please tell me what you've come for. Is the door shut? It is. Why? Because I'm about to put my life and the lives of others in your hands. Your life? I'm the one who dragged Oliver back to Fagan. You mean he didn't steal the books and money? I thought he wouldn't. I'm the woman you have heard him tell of who lives among thieves and has never known any better life. What dreadful things you tell me. I would certainly be murdered by those whom I stole away from if they knew I was here. But why? Oliver is in great danger. Heavens, but at least he's still alive. Yes, but only at the whim of those I consort with. At any moment, they could decide to murder him. Or worse. Worse? They could drag him into the miserable life they lead. One of thieving, dishonesty and crime. I've said enough. I must go back. Back? Why do you wish to return? There's a gentleman in the next room who could find you a safe place. I must go back because... Oh, how can I tell such things to an innocent lady like you? Go on, please. I must go back because... Among the men I have told you of, there is one, the most desperate among them all, that I can't leave. No, not even to be saved from the life I am now leading. I love him, despite everything. 
All you say leads me to believe that you could still yet be reclaimed from the life that shames you. You were the first that ever blessed me with words as these. And if I had heard them years ago, they might have turned me from a life of sin and sorrow. But it's too late. It's too late. It's never too late. It is. I could not be his death. But why should you be? Nothing could save him if I told the others what I've told you. He's so bold and could be so cruel. Is it possible for such a man as this that you can resign every future hope and certainty of immediate rescue? It is madness. I only know that it is so, and not just with me, but with hundreds of others, as bad and as wretched as myself. I must go back. I am drawn back in spite of everything. But what of Oliver? You agree we must try and save him? Can you bring him here? Not here, dear lady. It's too dangerous. Then where? I'll bring Oliver to... to London Bridge at midnight. Promise me that you'll keep my secret. I promise. But wait, can't I help you? It's too late for me. The doctor runs through the streams to warn Oliver of the turn of events. When suddenly Bill Sykes arrives. When suddenly Bill Sykes steps out of the gloom, grabs him, and pins him down.
you got there, boy? My locket. That's all I want. You can have the rest. Ain't that sporting? <laughs> Go ahead. Kill me. I'd rather be dead than put. I don't like you the moment I set eyes on you. I wish the Bush knew that was before the Nazi! Phil? How did you get that? Your little apprentice stole it. Oliver, my dear! I'm glad you learned something at least. <laughs>
night doesn't happen without a, a huge amount of work. <laughs> Thank you, Abigail. Um, <laughs> um, we started a tradition tonight that we're, I'm hoping to repeat in six weeks' time. We had some parents from Norman Avenue helping out the back today. Uh, it's always lovely to see your own children on stage. Their play will be in six weeks' time. So I'd really love it if a few of the Brunswick Street crew could say, we'll give them a hand so that uh, they can watch their children the whole way through. So that's a very nice tradition to start tonight. So let, let's give those, those guys a hand. like to very much thank the, the backstage crew which is which is here and here and here. Let's give them a couple of praise. It's always hard to uh, choose a number of thank yous. Uh, I chose six tonight. I don't know why I chose six. There's a, you could have chosen a hundred but I, I've chosen six. The, the first two I'd like to thank are uh, Nikki and Arthur. Done a wonderful job with lots of the props and also with the makeup. Brunswick Street Mothers have done a, a wonderful job on that. Uh, Anne and Sue and Emma. I need to Amazing choreographer, director, producer, uh, probably in the history of the world, is Sam. <laughs> Could you just switch them on for me for two seconds? Just there. If you helped in any way, can you please stand up? Anyone? Anyone? Go, stand up. Seriously, if you helped in any way, Alistair, stand up. Parents, stand up. Lights 
on again just for a second. Uh, just because it's uh, at this point we try and not lose all of our, our wonderful costumes. Uh, we'll have the kids backstage for about 10 minutes. Thank you for coming along tonight. I think you enjoyed the show. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Yeah.